there are many ways to use multi-hooping and many types of multi-hooping scenarios. In this next series of videos, we'll look at some of the different types of designs that require multiple hoops and some of the decisions that must be made when you use multiple hoops. First, let's look at the decisions. First of all, when I open the multi-hooping toolbox, I need to make a decision whether to automatically add hoops or to manually place the hoops. I always opt for trying automatically add hoops first because the software makes the decisions for you. If you don't get the results you want, you can always make changes, but automatically adding hoops will give you a starting point. Then you need to choose if you want to add registration marks or not. You can add registration marks automatically with the software. You can create your own reference marks, or you can use no reference marks. Reference marks are used to help you align the split design, but with the newer machines, there are features that make it easy to align designs without reference marks or registration marks. Registration marks are placed in overlapping areas of the adjacent hoops. This decision in terms of whether or not to use registration marks will be influenced by your multi-hooping scenario. Options can be changed by clicking on the options icon, which is either in your top toolbar or also in your multi-hooping toolbox. And then you can choose to not have them by unchecking, or you can choose the amount of the margin. The larger the margin, the further the marks are away from the hoop edge. If you manually add hoops, you have lots of different options for adding the hoops in the multi-hooping toolbox. You can also decide to rotate hoops if it works better the way the design stitches. And you can do this by first selecting the hoop and then using the rotate icons. As far as scenarios of multi-hooping, there are different types of designs that require multiple hooping. First of all, you can have individual designs that are scattered throughout a project that don't overlap and are too far away to be placed in one hoop but you may want them spaced in a certain way and you can use multi-hooping to get them spaced the way you want. You may have a design that has individually spaced designs, yet some of them will fit within the same boundaries of the same hoop. Multi-hooping can help you here. You may have a continuous embroidery design that you want to align. Multi-hooping can help you here. And then the fourth scenario, you may have a large design that has to be split because the hoop isn't large enough to accommodate the design. This design has critical alignment points that must be aligned because there are no spaces between the elements of the design. This is probably the most challenging type of multi-hooping. We're gonna look at the different designs and all the decisions that must be made when multi-hooping in the next series of videos.